All right, hey, it's Mr. Kaczynski. Getting started in section G, all about scientific notation. Got a lot of examples where we're going to convert back and forth between standard and scientific notation today. So this number is written in standard notation. We want to write it in scientific notation. All right, the scientific notation, um, let's see if we can identify some patterns here. It's going to be 6.35 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, if we take 6.35 and we multiply it by 10 five times, it'll be 635,000. Scientific notation is always, this blue number here is always going to be at least 1 and less than 10, and this red number, and then we're always going to multiply by a power of 10. Let's do it a few more times. So um, let's move the decimal place left one spot and make this 4.51. So I would have to multiply 4.51 by 10 one time to have it equal 45.1. Let's move that decimal place all the way over until it's just to the right of the 8. We would have to multiply 8 by 10 three times for it to equal 8,000. All right, so this is a very tiny number. How does this differ? Well, we still need this first factor to be between 1 and 10, all right? But then we're going to divide by 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. And to show division, we just use a negative exponent. So 5.62 times 10 to the negative fifth. Same idea. This first factor is going to be 5.728. Just move the decimal right there in between the first two numbers that aren't zeros. And then we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Don't just count the zeros. Count all the digits that you'd have to move the decimal place to the right of. So that was 10 places, the nine zeros and the 5. All right, so we're going to do 5.728 divided by 10, 10 times. That's times 10 to the negative 10th. One more with these really tiny numbers. 9.279, move the decimal place right in between that 9 and that 2, and then count to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 places. So negative 11. So negative exponents for really tiny numbers, less than 1, positive exponents for numbers bigger than one. All right, so now we're given a number in standard or in scientific notation. We're going to go into standard form. So um, if we multiply 9.8 by 10 one time, we'd have 98. Multiply it by 10 a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. It's 98,000. IXL doesn't care if you put the comma in there or not, but helps me keep it organized. All right, so again, if I take 57 point, or I'm sorry, 5.7251 and I multiply it by 10 one time, how about we multiply it by 10 four times? That would be 57,251. But then I still have to multiply it by 10 another four times. One, two, three, four. 572,510. So if you multiply 5 by 10 eight times, you're going to get a huge number, 572,510,000. One more of these huge numbers, all right? So if we multiply that number by 10 four times, we get this. But we need to multiply it by 10 14 times, so that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Put some commas in there. You don't have to for IXL, but it does help me organize. So this is thousands, millions, billions, trillions, 956 trillion, 10 billion. Huge number. That's why we use scientific notation to avoid writing all these zeros. All right, but don't forget negative exponents, they mean tiny numbers, okay? So this is actually 7.3 divided by 10 twice. So that would be 0 0.073.
All right, so the negative two is those two decimal places that we had to move the decimal place to the right. Again, dividing by negative three. So 0 0.123 places that we move that digit or that decimal place. One, two, three places. One more. Just got to show this negative exponent one more time here. So we're going to divide by 10 nine times. That's what that negative exponent means. So I'm going to put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros, then the 9, then the 98. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. That is a very tiny number. That's what scientific notation lets us do, get rid of all those zeros. So there's an intro to converting between standard and scientific notation. Good luck and let me know how it goes.